Oh. Wow. Thanks for joining us. So I, formal. Yeah. We're very formal now, as you yeah. see from my string of pearls. And it, it's not come on my chest. You get your mind out of the gutter. Come on. Don't fucking. Nobody was thinking that. That's. I kind of forgot about that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, br- string of pearls. Or what do they say? Pearl necklace. I'll Is give you a pearl necklace. Has anyone ever said that to you? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. It's imagine shocking. how horrible. Imagine if somebody said that to me and I still was like, I'll still fuck them. Yeah. I'll mm. let them do that. Mm-hmm. That would be crazy. Yeah. The only time I've ever heard come referred to as pearls in like a <laughs> it was like from a an like an old one like my high school boyfriend had like an old dad and so he who like really seemed to want us to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> but the way he talked about it was very like aged. And so like there he was like a security guard for concerts in Boston and he was do he was I will never forget because I was like mortified. <laughs> he was going to be a security guard at a Pearl Jam concert and just like wouldn't let me hear the end of it where it's like, I'm going to Pearl Jam. So you and Andrew can make you know, so Andrew can he Pearl can Jam, jam on his, his pearls up inside your pussy. Yeah, he was oh. just like, I'm gonna leave you guys alone tonight so my son can come all over you, basically. <laughs> oh um, god. What a yeah. great dad. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also like really yeah. support him. Calling it like a pearl is kind of gross to me, but it does have a pearl like uh, luminescence, I would say. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. well, this was supposed to be your intro, but you know, I think, <laughs> Sorry you know, Jamie really Loftus. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for Thank coming. you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, Jamie's very, very talented, a great writer, great Thank comedian. You. you do a lot of great stuff, have been for a long time. Thanks. You're great. Thanks. I feel like I've been alive forever. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the 20s is just your adolescence of adulthood. And so you're just kind of like an idiot. And then in your 30s, you're like, all right, like I'm less cringy now. Mm-hmm. And then you probably feel that way even more so in your 40s where you're like, oh, my God, I thought I was like cool in my 30s. It wasn't. <laughs> and then your 50s, you're like, wow, I had big swing and dick energy in my 40s. <laughs> but like now I'm, you know, and then your 60s, you're like, that was all bullshit. Yeah. Now yeah. it's a real time. You're like, and nah. then you die. And then you just die. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're in your 70s, you get dementia. That's kind of ideal, though, right? You're, you just like think you're more and more hot shit as you get older, and then it's over. I think that's what yeah. happens. I think that's usually the common trajectory. The only downside of that is that I think people get really bitter with that, where they're like, nobody fucking knows shit except me. You know? <laughs> and then it just, that keeps getting like, nah, 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 nah. and you just like, keep folding into yourself until you become mm-hmm. a clam person and you die. I would I would see that a lot at as at the gas station I worked at in high school. There was this mm-hmm. one company, it was a construction company and they had young kids and then there was a truck of older guys. And the young kids would come in tunes, chilling, vaping, just like kind of giggling, having a good time, and then the old guy would come in and be like, "Why do I have to press one for English? What the fuck is going on <laughs> in this country?" And I'd be like, "Oh shit." He's upset. He's yeah. pretty mad, and I think he's. I think it's about his own life. I don't think it's about having to hit one for English. He would yell that at me. I'd be like, I don't know. I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Just hit one. I don't know. Yeah, can you hit that kid's vape or something? <laughs> yeah. you, need to relax. you need to chill. You ever dude. tried dab pens, sir? Because that would really <laughs> help your day. I don't. Those are so scary. Yeah. Do you smoke weed? Not really. I'm pretty like not uh, cool. Like yeah, no, I don't, and I never really have it doesn't like do much for me though really? i wish it did you have a stoner girl vibe is that good that's yeah good. yeah it's like sexy okay. yeah cool. it's like sexy Thank stoner girl like dude she's like fucking chill like we'll hit the bong and watch shrek too dude and, like yeah. that's like her idea of a date and like that's sick for me like she's super down to earth like hot I'm, chill smokes weed i'm cool to like watch shrek too but i need to have my faculty <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm gonna watch shrek too i, I gotta be like be able to like say all the facts i know about the movie yeah. <laughs> and i don't want my senses dulled all right dude spit some know? spit some bars what's going on so shrek too i mean it's one of it's i think it's like good but not as good uh they're the Shrek 2 one is kind of like the girl boss one, I believe, where it's like, oh, Fiona. Like, it's sort of more, it's Fiona's story. Much like, you know how anytime someone's like, I love Mad Max, but they're like, but it's fucking Charlize Theron's movie. I'm like, well, it's called Mad Max, but sure. <laughs> anyway, Shrek 2 is the equivalent of that. It's called Shrek, but it's about Fiona. And that's the one that has the Counting Crow song in it. Which one? How does that go? Uh, the one that goes accidentally in love. Uh, I don't like that. 
the guy the, the, Crows. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's shocking. I love them. You currently love them. Yeah. The Have lead singer. Really, the lead yeah. singer has a horrifying hairdo. That guy's awesome. <laughs> he's he's one of the greatest rock stars of all time. He's dated like the entire cast of Friends and every hot girl in the late '90s, early 2000s. What? Yeah, his dating history, fucking insane. I'm gonna look it up. Good for him. I gotta look. Good it's for, crazy. Did you get into the Counting Crows off of Shrek too? Uh, yeah. Probably, I was like, yeah. yeah okay, I mean, I, I don't know how else people got into Counting Crows. I found or this. Smash Mouth for that matter. Yeah. Oh, Smash, Smash Mouth. Mouth. Well, prior was to careers, but prior to the film, <laughs> I'm gonna call it a film. It is a film. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. prior to the uh, Criterion Collection film Shrek, mm-hmm. it. I knew those bands because they were on the radio. Like Counting Crows had like Mr. Jones and me, right? Wasn't that, that them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 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 That's one that's pretty sick, actually. Long December. Go. So sad. It's been, a, it's wait, been a long December, and there's reason to believe. Wow, Something your like eyes that. look so like <laughs> glistening really and beautiful. Lit up. Yeah, yeah you just alive. it's such a sad but. Well, your eyes like really softened when you began to sing that, and it really like it's the spirit. It just Adam got Eric like struck. Kevin right. Crow sounds like driving home from your aunt's house, like in the back seat. It's like Delilah shit. Yeah, your mom is like going through. I, I, I'm just like being taken to it, like going to one of those drive-throughs where they only sell cigarettes. <laughs> And oh Counting Crows is blasting. He dated, he dated Christina Applegate. Um, oh. And these are just, I'm going household names. There's a ton of other beautiful women in here that I don't know who they They're are. They're probably just like professional models. Yeah. yeah. Courtney Cox. Jen Aniston. What? Winona Wait, Ryder. I'm sorry. Let's back up. He dated two women from Friends? Yeah. What How it, did that show not implode? He doesn't give a fuck. Was it while... <laughs> He's a home record, dude. Yeah. Was it while Friends was on? I'm let's sure, see, you know? See. Well, Imagine like, if you dated him now, wild. like he has no relevance, and you're like, no, I like him now. Uh, he dated Jen Aniston in 1995. Wow. In 97, he dated Courtney Cox back to back. Okay, well, Ooh. maybe, to be fair, <sighs> he, they could have done something where, like, Jen was like, you know what? Remember Chris? Um, he was honestly super great. It just didn't work out. Like, you know, now I'm with Brad. Mm-hmm. So, like, maybe Courtney, like, go for it. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was an honorable mention. Maybe he's actually such a good guy that he got a fucking a recommend a, a recommendation. He got yeah, he got passed off. He's because so there's awesome. Okay, That's, read more. I, uh that was all the ones I knew. Okay. Like I, the but there's ones. I mean, that's three hitters. That's Apple pretty games. impressive. Oh, Emmy uh Rossum. Oh, she's way too young for him. What? She's pretty young. Wow. Holy um, shit. All right. They dated from October 2009 to September 2010. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mary uh, Louise Parker. She's oh, hot. classic! Yeah, I love Mary very Louise good Parker. actress. This guy's Gwen she Stefani. What? Whoa. Come on, this guy's killing. It. <laughs> now what? I feel like this is What's bullshit. His name? Yeah, like what uh, website Adam, are you Adam on? Adam Duritz. Adam. Duritz? Adam. I don't know why I thought his name Doesn't was Chris. Sound. You I mean, know why? You know why? Chris energy. Why? <laughs> he looks like fucking Chris from Backstreet Boys. They got the same hairdo. Bro. Oh, the one who was in Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, the you one. Know, is like, it Chris from In Sync? She's hot. Yes, I don't know Chris she is. Kirkpatrick. Okay, he looks like Chris Kirkpatrick. Okay, okay. The the guy who had braids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same shit. God. That's why I thought his name was Chris. That's such a bad look. Does he still look like that? Nah. Okay. He looks like he should now. Like but what? Has a just, heart condition? Yeah. No, he just looks like a, <laughs> a dude in his forties. Sick. Now. But before he was like thirty and had dreadlocks as a white dude. Mm-hmm. I still looked. Cool that was Chris fuck. Kirkpatrick's thing. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that like he looks like Chris from InSync? Like oh pretty know. much spot on. I don't know anyone from InSync. Okay. Oh, bizarre. brave of you! Yeah. Wow, yeah, brave of you to be so youthful. Um, <laughs> it, it, watch the. Uh, I don't get your references. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Watch the Mr. Jones music video and. And watch the way his body moves in that. He's not dancing per se, but he's he's sort of just like really just like like fucking letting the letting the music. He's doing the Bernie. Like, he's like kind of. That's like when all torso, no leg movement. All torso. Because that's a fun way to watch a man dance. <laughs> you're just mm. like, oh, you're planted. Yeah. You're planted. Well, there's a lot of sort of white people that dance like toddlers dance, where it's like they're just <laughs> learning how their body moves, and they're like, they're like. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting like, <laughs> yeah, they yeah, get worked up, and then they just like yeah. calm down. A yeah, bit. yeah, they're like, a, they're a toddler that just saw someone walking with a balloon, and they're like, they don't know how to react. <laughs> yes, 
Yes. But, it, but it's just like fucking uh, whatever that song is by the Killers. Fucking uh, oh, Mr. Brightside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, like, it's side. it's more like I got a feeling <laughs> that tonight's <laughs> gonna be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> him, he can hold it. He can hold it. <laughs> that's the part when you when they can hold it. That's the part of the song where it goes muzzle top. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's their favorite part. I love, they love waiting for the part. I love yeah. watching someone wait for the part, mm -hmm. and they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> line. And they just keep going. Oh my! Can you guys God. dance? Uh like what kind? I don't know. Uh, like, can you not embarrass yourself? I guess if there was people dancing. Yeah, yeah, I could. Do, but I, I did like dance. But I, it took me a long time because I thought that like I took dance lessons in high school or like my whole life <laughs> through high school. And I, well, you that, thought you took lessons? No, I. Well, you thought, did. I definitely you did, did okay. for like okay. fifteen whole years. Got it. Got it. Got it. But then, but that doesn't translate to like. So I thought it would be translate to like prom dancing. It doesn't. Not even close, and it may be an active hindrance. Okay, so what um, kind of dancing did you learn, though? I did, like, ballet and tap dancing, and that doesn't translate to the to a wedding or a prom. Doesn't tap have to do with rhythm, though? So I feel like mm -hmm. you have to count in, so then that would have... I think that would be helpful. I have decent rhythm, but then it's like, oh, no one's telling you what to do. I was used to being told exactly what to do and when to do it. So when you have to improvise, it's scary, man. It's scary mm. out there. But I over the years, I figured it out. I love dancing. You yeah. good? I'm, I think I'm pretty good. I love dancing. Yeah. Like, it's fun. It's yeah. joyful. It's great. Yeah. I don't like do it like, I'm not fucking out here like step it up, okay? <laughs> But I am like, I'm a humble, you know, servant of the rhythm. And I love, I just, it's fun. I love music so much. I like, you know, I like DJ, it's fun. And like, mm -hmm. my mom's a really good dancer. Mm -hmm. Very good. Like, like very, very good. Wait, um, so do you go like out dancing? Is that? I don't really, that's the funny thing is that like, I like dancing by myself at home. Mm -hmm. Like, that's fun. I like dancing. Like, if I'm really feeling it and I'm, like, out and they're playing, like, good music, like, fuck yeah. But I don't, not to, I mean, I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to music. And so, like, it's hard for me sure. to, like, was at a wedding recently. I did not like the music. Everyone was so happy. I felt so alone like from humanity <laughs> like literally so alone i was like i'm just gonna like sit by the ocean by myself like <laughs> you got like, really pensive about yeah, it yeah 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 <laughs> and i was on molly which like should have made me be like anything's cool and i was right. like wow this is not working like oh. that's even worse but uh the music was like to a point where i'm like oh i can't dance to this i'm glad other people can mm -hmm. it's all good i just don't want to fake the funk i can't do that mm -hmm. so i, I just ref dishonest i just refuse to I, i'm down as chat like I, I, you know, I like going out and chatting. The idea of like going out to a place for dancing, mm -hmm. I commend, I would like to do that. Uh, it's not really how I socialize. Okay. You know, I'm not sense. really, I like dancing, but it's not like a, it's not like a, it's like a featured act. It's not like the main performance. How do you, how would you meet someone dancing? Uh, my mom would do it all the time in the 90s in LA. What? How yeah. would that go? Do you just like... Because you start like dancing and then people are like, damn girl, you got rhythm. And then you're like, See? thanks. And then you guys like, we're like, oh, we're going out to Bongo's next Friday. Come go roll through. And you're like, I'll be there. And then you got like a whole dance crew that of like people that like are... a pre-hang thing too. Yeah. Okay. That's, I'm, assu I'm just okay, assuming. I, I remember... Uh, I, I was at this internship in college and it was at it was like a radio internship in Boston and one of the kids <gasps> What station? Uh it was a Beasley. So we went to Whoa, okay. like ninety eight five, like that whole air building mm -hmm. of stuff. Uh but there was this kid Rod who was from I forget what state he was from, but he was from the South. <laughs> I like forgot that was a name. I was like Rod. Rod. Yeah. <laughs> what is that dumb. short for? Rodney? Uh, Roderick. Yeah, I think his name is Roderick. Roderick. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Roderick <laughs> Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Roderick Downey but Jr. <laughs> he's like this like really cool, like great style looking black dude, like super confident. And one time he was like, so uh like it was after the internship, he was like, Yo, we should all like go out. Like, where do you guys go dancing here? And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, like where are your dance halls? And I was like, in Boston? What are you talking about, man? He's like, I was like, what do you, he's like, I was like, you have halls where people go and dance? He goes, yeah, we'll do line dancing. There's all these 
it's really fun. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we don't have those here. <laughs> There's nothing like that. <laughs> That's either. not like a Boston pastime. A Boston pastime is like fighting and talking shit and like getting yeah. blacked out drunk. I'm like, we can go yeah. throw rocks at disabled kids. That's what we do <laughs> around here if you want to do that. It's pretty fun. It's pretty You're fun. You gotta have pretty good rhythm for it too. Yeah. You gotta like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. We could, we could do that for like, <laughs> like an hour and a half. You know? But I just remember being like, oh my God, you guys like, I didn't know people went out to dance. Yes. That was new yeah. to my brain. There's that's a really healthy way of like socializing if you're mm -hmm. like like that's like sweet i think yeah. that's awesome i promote that mm. i'm it's not like, a bad dancer i can i can not embarrass myself i've seen you yeah. dance it's good you dance okay. like like this is a compliment you dance like um we are in the peanuts uh, yeah thank you okay. <laughs> okay so that means that legs are yeah. moving at least i got some yeah. like i can move my legs around a little bit i did a brief stint of irish step dancing so i have a little oh. bit of rhythm i got some rhythm on me okay. oh you really buried okay. the lead there i never yeah. knew that yeah 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 used to do that and then mm -hmm. uh quit because it was i was the only guy Mm -hmm. And I was very young, and I was just like, I was like, I don't want to be around girls all the time. I was like seven or eight. So. You didn't want mm -hmm. that responsi that pussy responsibility. Really too much pussy, dude. <laughs> you didn't want that. Way too much. I can't be around this much pussy. Yeah, I seven. like. I I want to like create an alternate version, like uh, alternate history version of like you had to quit because you were like so good, and people were you're like, yeah, I was just like, I was bumming the other kids out, yeah. and so like <laughs> I had they, to stop. They did like beg me not to quit because I was the only guy in the they entire always... studio, and they're like, please. Please, you'll like win those competitions if you stay. And I was like, Psh, I'm out of here. I'm going to be really bad at other sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have that seriously take a hindrance on my confidence for the next 10 years. Please. That's a lot of responsibility, though, because it's like we had like boys come, like the token boy come in and out of the class over the years. It's too much pressure. And then it's like, but every once in a while when you go to a competition and you see like someone has found the boy. The dance boy. Who's like really into it. It's like that, um, I saw it again the other day. It's like a young Ryan Gosling being Crush the boy. It. Crush Unbelievable. It. You're like, oh, this is the boy that we've been looking for. <laughs> he just doesn't exist in our area, yeah. but he exists somewhere in Massachusetts, you know, but just not where we were. Yeah, like Mickey Never Mouse Club style, Justin Timberlake, like mm -hmm. the dance boy. And every, like, yeah, every team needs a dance boy. Yeah, every every good team needs a dance boy, and it just never came together. Yes. <laughs> you know? Do you ever uh, see the Goosebumps episode that has Gossing in it? Yeah. It's like every, I'm a huge Goosebumps guy. Uh, every Goosebumps ep episode has like the worst actors you've ever seen, and then one of them just has a young Ryan Gosling who murders. Mm -hmm. And you're like, watching it, you're like, holy shit, like he was very good even when he was eight. Uh, I think Jessica Biel was in one when she was very young as well. There was an episode, a Goosebumps episode that, you know, retrospectively, they're very bad. Like, I remember sure. as a kid, I was like, this is incredible. This is Stephen King for <laughs> the youth. Like, this is Bellissima. Mm -hmm. And I watched one, like, recently, and it was about, this is the concept. It's a restaurant that's always packed. You know, it's mm -hmm. hard, you know. It's hard to get a reservation. You got to get a reservation like a month in advance. And the soup is the thing, which is already like, you lost okay, me. We got yeah. a famous <laughs> soup. We got a famous <laughs> soup in the mix. It's like a white tablecloth, fancy restaurant. And they're like, you got to get the soup. I'm like, that's already, my suspension of disbelief has already tapped out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And the thing about the soup that you find out, it's a nefarious why it's so good it's because it is flavored by the screams of people <laughs> <laughs> so, like monsters incorporated yeah dude <laughs> yes i like the use of the full name monsters incorporated yeah. it's a company the uh, miramax film yeah, <laughs> um, llc <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically so they they gotta spook people or scare people or do acts of violence to people so then they scream and then that goes into the soup and then that's what makes it good. I think it's a metaphor for adrenochrome. That's what it sounds like. I love that QAnon uh, conspiracy theory that's just deeply rooted in yeah. the recesses of your brain. And Thank you comes for bringing out. that back. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. I think about it a lot. <laughs> but I feel like that was such a like pasted together episode because i'm like oh you just relied on the fact that children are like okay like i can't really put this together this is entertaining because i'm confused if i'm confused it means i'm dumb because i'm a kid and then you watch it as an adult and you're like 
this doesn't make any sense. Why are you gaslighting children and thinking you're confusing the <laughs> shit out of them? <laughs> like, that was... I like that they chose a food that, like, if they were really going for, like, child propaganda, you would have made it, like, a food that was bad for you that had the screams inside, not, like, soup. Like, cake. You know? The cake is yeah, so like, good, it's evil. made of scream. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking like that. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like uh what's that fucking witch movie? Uh the Hocus movie. Pocus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? It's like that. Liam, you mustn't drink the adrenochrome <laughs> for it has youthful <laughs> properties. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Have you ever done any witch auditions? <laughs> Honestly, yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> literally for what what witch um it was for a, some uh disney show mm. and um howard menser you know he uh, brought me into the casting office so thanks nice. howard menser um got it dude fuck them you deserve that role thank yeah. you yeah. yeah i um you transformed thank you so else. much yeah i feel like i have it you know people have called me that and yet <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but like casting doesn't want to mm. <laughs> and that's interesting isn't it yeah it's really interesting yeah. that you just don't really want to give me the full spectrum of my artistic credo mm -hmm. I can't be a witch because I'm Persian <laughs> <laughs> oh or you're afraid to cast a Persian witch because then you seem like you would be a bigot that's yeah. interesting so the more you know actually witches uh, Persians are so witchy ancient culture mm. Mm -hmm. you know I don't know much about uh, Persians other than... Welcome course. to the rest of the U.S. that <laughs> knows nothing <laughs> about Iran. Prince of Persia? Or yeah, they're like, Jake Gyllenhaal! Was... Get in here. That pass a fact check, right? Oh, my that was... God. Yeah. <laughs> that was all so... Now, they're like, like, Iran's trending. And then they're like, oh, Iran. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the, the horrible human rights issues that are happening there. And then they're like, yeah... That's cool that you're from there. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. <laughs> For sure, man. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. All right. You want to get into talking about dating? No, I really want to talk about the <laughs> geopolitical system in yeah. Iran. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the rest of the episode. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. That'd be great. I got some thoughts. I'm sure that would make everyone feel really happy. <laughs> you should lead the discussion, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's good. going on? <laughs> Literally, I'm asking because I don't know. <laughs> How's it going? It, the the Bo Burnham, I forget what like uh uh the conflict was, but he's like, what's going on with them? They have similar similar hats. Can't they can't they bond over that? It was like two fucking countries going to war. They have cool hats. They look the same. Um, all right. Would you ever date someone with kids? And I wonder what it would be like to date someone with kids. Like so much pressure, I guess. What do you think, Nina? Uh, never have dated someone with kids had sex with people with kids mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. fine uh i i don't know man i'm not like i love kids i want children myself mm -hmm. and i think that that's also probably why i haven't dated somebody with kids actually is because i i would fear that they wouldn't want to have more kids so it's like i don't really want to oh, invest okay. that much time into somebody that probably is like yeah i already have kids so like i don't i definitely don't want more kids mm -hmm. and i would want like i've I, yeah that's just kind of my my take um so i think that's why i've never gotten really serious with somebody with kids now i just want to say i'm sure there's so many people out there with children that are like no i'm super open to this and whatever and that's mm -hmm. totally fine in my personal experience i have never dated somebody with kids i i think also from my lifestyle um people with kids probably wouldn't date me to be fair like you wouldn't want to date like a girl who uh like djs for a living and does comedy and like who like right. <laughs> like openly likes cocaine like i just don't <laughs> think that's like a good thing for your kid well mm -hmm. if it's like a really you would get bad dads you would attract horrible fathers maybe. i don't want to fuck a horrible father like i i think that's a big thing for me too like mm -hmm. i don't if you're not a I don't know. If you're a dad that's going to date me, you're a bad dad, and then I'm not attracted to you. So it's just kind of this like cycle that won't ever work. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. like the whole daddy thing, mm. can't do that. I hate when people like, call me daddy. I'm like, no. No. Do you want, do you want me to, th do you want me to think of like my alcoholic homeless father <laughs> while we're fucking? 
Like, do you want me to think that? <laughs> Does that where is that where you want my brain to go? Because if I say daddy, I'll get sad. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah, you was <laughs> you I... abandoned me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really hot to some people though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want tears out of like streaming down my face because I'm choking on your cock, not because oh I'm having PTSD. Oh my God. Why are you so like you're okay, Liam's pretending like he's squeamish about sexuality. It is I'm not. Just, you just, when you I'm not. It, Choking on cock out of nowhere. I was like, good, good grief. Goodness. <laughs> that was okay. a scream. Okay, Peanuts character. <laughs> there he goes again. I've been mixing in good grief a lot. I like it. I like it's good grief. Good. Yeah. Uh, what about you? I don't know. I never have for sure. I feel like it's like, a, I, I agree. With, like, I feel like I would be the problem in a relationship too because i'm like i'm not you know i don't know it it introduces and i know that this isn't true across the board because i also haven't done it but like it introduces a level of seriousness at the top of a relationship in my head whether it's there or not where i i don't know i was like this person's a father <laughs> like well, i can't yeah you're right though yeah. because i think that that you if you are a parent, like you should have some level of seriousness when you're dating somebody because this could yeah. be somebody that you're potentially introducing to your child. Right. You're responsible for their life as well as yours. So if you're dating, like if you're just like, um, oh, like dating this person, you're just responsible for yourself. It's fine. Once right. you have kids and it's like, uh, is this person going to be like an okay role model for this person? Like, yeah. are they safe to be around? Mm hmm. That's <laughs> a very good point. And I also like, I, I love kids and want kids and I'm, also afraid of like what if because i know this happens all the time and i like have everyone knows uh people that it's happened to it's like you get into a relationship with someone who has kids you bond with the kids and then the relationship sucks and now you're like i'm bonded to these kids this sucks for everyone like it's horrible so i you, like yeah. end up staying in a relationship you don't want to be in because you like the kids or you bum the kids out. It just seems scary. I, uh, as somebody who my dad dated a lot of women when I was younger, and so mm -hmm. I had like a lot of like interim stepmoms, mm -hmm. um, it was really heartbreaking. Like, you know, and I was lucky. My dad actually always dated like great women. And so okay. that was really nice, like very like age appropriate, like nice ladies. Um, but there was like, it was devastating as like a young girl sometimes because I would connect mm -hmm. with them and then they kind of had this like, I was like the glean in their eye because they were, you know, they were all in their kind of like late 30s. And I think that they also wanted kids and they were dating this guy who had a daughter. And I think that this is so fucked up. I think that my dad having a daughter got him more pussy because it made okay, a <laughs> hard nod. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it made them be like, oh, my God, he's a sensitive guy. And I'm like, right. oh, like you should talk to me about it because um, <laughs> yeah. it's not great. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, which is such a false flag for this guy's uh, sensitive, you know? Um, it makes it seem like he has his shit together. It's like the wedding ring thing, where mm -hmm. if you see a wedding ring, stability, uh, you know, he's uh, there for enough for a woman to choose him for the rest of his life type of thing, where you're like, that's a... He's that a stand-up guy. Exactly. Yeah, I think... But it was really sad for me. Like, dude, I reconnected with a woman that my dad dated for a long time when I was, like for a few years like mm -hmm. seven eight nine years old like some pivotal years wow and yeah i think maybe i don't remember but it was a good amount of years she like made a bedroom for me like in her home you know she was such That's an angel so nice. and i reconnected with her like a few years ago and went to her home and it was like oh my god i could like cry thinking about it it was just so like she was such a good person and like mm -hmm. she wanted to marry him my dad and he was like no and then so they broke up and it oh. really broke you know it's like yeah. that was really i don't know it was so fucking sad but like just as a child of somebody who like had a lot of women and like in and out of his life it was like a weird thing so i think it's like yeah. i also can't be that woman okay that's because right. i you know like that's uh, yeah yeah right that's, what about you uh like obviously never had the opportunity uh or it's i don't even know anyone with kids like because at mm -hmm. your age, yeah. probably. Um, but same thing, I want kids of my own. Mm -hmm. And so I guess like if I was, you know, I don't know, way older than I am now and fell in love with a girl that had children already, I'd be like, all right, I'd have to really know that I am not going to leave. Because yeah. I'd have to be like 100% like this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life because I couldn't just fucking take off and these kids that I'm like, 
because you can't just like half-ass a relationship with a kid. You have to be either right. completely there or not. So it's it's again a terrifying. Place. Yeah, it's Scenario. not casual. It completely yeah. eliminates that casualness that makes is what we identify with like the preamble of romance. Mm -hmm. You know, of like, oh, this is like we're just getting to know each other, and it's like fun and flirty, and it's more like okay, sign these court documents, and like it just <laughs> right. immediately is like very serious. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting like I don't know. I think it's really beautiful when people like have second life and they like you know somebody becomes like a father of somebody else's children or a mother of somebody I, I think that's like awesome that happens quite a bit mm -hmm. and i actually think those people are like really commendable i'm not one of those people uh <laughs> yeah like check in with me in five years i also i feel like i would be more likely to do like a blended family situation like if i had a kid and then i met someone with a kid it's like all right we both know how to have a kid let's you know like brady bunch it or whatever it's kind of would be cool if to be like uh divorced and then it like get cool to together with somebody like when you guys are in your 40s or 50s and then you're like oh yeah my kids are all they're all grown up and i'm like me too yeah. <laughs> my voice is like this now because i'm older yeah. it'd be there was <laughs> jennifer coolidge <laughs> <laughs> always it's whatever it's yeah always the cool voice coming yeah out. yeah it's good thank you <laughs> it's the perfect picture for an older woman she's mm -hmm. trending She's right back. now. Awesome. She's back, totally yeah. back. I just back. started. I uh, watched the first episode of White Lotus for season one. Mm -hmm. I never seen it or really even season heard about one. It. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love it. I'm very excited good. for I was, you. I was pulled in. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> fucking love it, my friend. It's a, it's a fun. It was cast. wild. I haven't started season two yet. But oh, I just started one. episode one, baby. Wow. <laughs> Look at um, her go. We're pivoting. It's, this is the White Lotus <laughs> 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 recap podcast. What else can we talk about on here? Um. Dating, so you're going out with someone, right? Sure. And then you find out, uh -huh. let's say a few dates in, that they're very religious. Not like in your face about it, like you need to be it or this isn't going to work out, but they are strict on their set of values. What what's what do you do? Ooh. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I feel like most religions wouldn't work in favor of me or my lifestyle. So it doesn't feel like a, I don't know. There's so many religions. There's so many different rules. What rules are they throwing at me? Um, uh, yeah, no, no premarital sex. Oh yeah, no, I have to go. <laughs> I have to leave. Maybe there's something less. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all, I, that's the biggest rule I could think of. What else? Like no fucking uh, specific dietary shit. Like they're, maybe they're like devout. Fasting, okay. Ramadan. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's only once in a while, though. When it comes to me and dating a religious person, I'm gonna have to quote Randy Jackson here. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't, I can't do it, and I completely mm -hmm. identify. It's like, no. First of all, I would never be in a situation like that because mm -hmm. they would never date me. That just wouldn't happen. I look like Betty Boop is the devil right now. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Like nobody who loves God is going to be like, she's my girl. And Unless I'm like, they're like, I could fix her. Cause oh there are God. those kind of religious guys that are like, I could fix her. I will. De I would the definitely, power of Christ. I would definitely like use somebody <laughs> for mean, sex and be like, yeah, like I need more thieving. I give you a hypothetical situation. Please. Mm -hmm. A Jehovah's witness. This goes for both of you. Knocks on your door. <laughs> Fucking stop. <laughs> Ryan Gosling guy's uh -huh. handsome yeah he's our okay. boss at the door uh -huh. and uh dance like, boy number one he's like, <laughs> he's like do you have a moment to talk about our lord and savior Jesus Christ and you're like <laughs> yeah okay um uh -huh. like what about him and then he just you guys hit it off and you're like I love this Jehovah's Witness uh you know he, he starts breaking the rules for you and because of that he wants you to abide by some of his rules and do this thing how long do you think you could do this? And he's like, like we were saying earlier, he's the hottest guy ever. Sex is awesome. Conversation's awesome. But then, like, you say fuck, and he's like, please don't say fuck around me. What do you, um, how long do you think you put up with that? You drink alcohol, and he's like, you really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I feel like if someone else's religion uh, starts to control, like, means that they're trying to control my behavior. I'm not interested. I, it's, not, it's not even like I wouldn't date someone religious as long as they were doing it in a way that applied to them and like they weren't like pushing it on me. 
I don't think that's very Christ-like to mm. make me do shit I don't want to do. Yeah. That's probably not true. <laughs> Can you not curse, though? Or, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait, I, I forgot this is a religious show. <laughs> I mean, that's a funny hypothetical. I will say this. I wouldn't even be interested... Because I've seen some hot Mormons. There's so many hot Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. I've seen because they, you know, they're fucking Dude, beautiful, good looking, dewy skin. Like I'll see them on the street, whatever, and I'm like, they're beautiful, and they're like, do you have a moment for the Lord? I'm like, no, I don't. Not today. I me and me and God have our own <laughs> private relationship. It's closed. Okay, we're monogamous. It's closed. Mm -hmm. Don't really want to talk about it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. But I don't know. I just feel like life. Uh, I, I pose this question. Uh, would you be able to date somebody that has counter political beliefs to you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I could not do that. I couldn't. Yeah. I could not do that. I would be like, let's not talk about it. Let's just not. But it. it would come up. Because then she'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, Sleepy Joe. And he'd be like, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, oh I guess. God. Yeah, I, I've never dated someone that's. Like we're not talking. I'm not talking about politics out. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, me me. Like it's mm. like it's just like I don't know. To me, that's morality, and I I feel like that's kind of the same thing with uh, with religion. You know, is that like that's their morality, and that's wonderful and fine, and everyone can do whatever they want. And I think I can't. If somebody wants to impede on my lifestyle with their shit. I am just like, sorry, but like, uh, this ain't the place. What if they're not impeding? Because I have friends that have very different political views than me and are very religious people. But like, we don't agree on either of those, but they're still... That's a friend. Yeah. yeah. A friend is significantly different than a significant other because a friend, like, for example, I'm sure you have a lot of friends that you're like, oh, they're a great friend. Mm. I could never live with them. Right, right. Because okay. you can just, you, a friend you can like tap out whenever. Yeah, whenever. and like they're yeah. great and like they're fun to have around. Or like, you know, there's, so like, you know, you have like friends with like horrendous drinking problems. And you're like, yeah, he's a good time. You know what I mean? Like he's a good time. Three hours max and then yeah. I need to get away from this yeah, person. Yeah. Love him dearly though. So yeah. I think that though with dating, it's like you kind of got to be on the same page with certain things. Like I, and I think that in terms of like, look, I don't think you need to fucking have the same like diet. I think fucking vegans can date fucking meat eaters. I think that is some yeah. guy is into, I don't know, some sports and a lady doesn't like it who gives a shit. If they, you always yeah. don't even like the same music, I don't think that matters either. I think that when it comes to the way in which you view the world, that's mm -hmm. a pretty big deal. And it's going to also leach into other things and other behaviors that might, I don't know, be negative for the relationship. A relationship's yeah. already difficult when you're on the same page and like the same shit. Yeah. Imagine mm -hmm. if you're like, uh, I have like completely obverse views than you. Right, like I have to convince you of who deserves rights. Like I could never be in a relationship like that. Like it's just too, I could be in a relationship with someone who I feel I can radicalize because that's a fun activity for me. Um, but like, if it's truly like we have a hard difference in our politics that is like insurmountable, like no one is going to budge. It just like, no, no, couldn't do it. It can't. Yeah. And I think it's funny when you bring up this hypothetical, by the way, because you actually are talking a lot about like, I think unbeknownst to you are talking about the actual case of Jody Arias. Do you know who that is? It's a Ooh. girl who killed her boyfriend. He was a devout Mormon. And they they started seeing each other mm -hmm. and he was always like, look, he was like not a good Mormon. You know, he was having sex getting and stuff head. like He's that. Fucking cool Mormon. Yeah. He's getting head in the, the backseat of his car. Oh, he was yeah. full PV, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was going full. OK. And they're having sex. And like they're kind of dating, kind of not. And he's kind of like stringing her along mm -hmm. and you know all of this stuff anyway. It's a really big true crime case where she stabbed him to death and she prior to killing him was like taking photos of him so there's like actually the last photo of him alive is like and he looks kind of scared and it's probably with her with like a gun or a knife in her hand because she stabbed him and then shot him and anyway so scary yeah when the like she's in jail now forever it um me. but well it, it <laughs> was i would have beat the shit out of her <laughs> <laughs> he was in a sh in the shower like so this is psycho Still. style oh my God. But I think that she was hot, and that's why it like that's why it was so sensationalized. Where they're like, right? It's like you, the Casey, what's her name? Casey Anthony. Yeah, yeah. 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 Casey you think, Anthony. You think mm -hmm. when he saw her walking in the bathroom with the knife, he was like, "All right, 
Like, <laughs> you're hot enough for me to still be like, you're going to hear the fuck? Like, what's going on? <laughs> this is almost a line. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, they were into, like, kinky stuff, too. And mm-hmm. so, like, I don't fucking know. But, you know, the... I think that that for him, it was really... It, it was interesting because like she would never be a Mormon. He would never see her like that because he only saw her as his like fuck toy basically. Mm -hmm. And she was, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying like dating somebody outside of your religion can lead to you getting fucking murdered. Okay. I'm changing my answer. (laughs) I don't know. What about Liam? Could you really date a girl that was like really religious? No, but for the same reason as you, they would never fucking fucking date me you know what i mean you know i will say this i think women are more like i can change him like dude uh this is an interesting thing that i think is true i think when a man enters a relationship he doesn't think the woman's gonna change at all and when a woman enters a relationship she's like i can change him Mm -hmm. but it's also because it's like you wouldn't enter the relationship if you didn't believe that was possible because you're like well i've been presented with an absolute disaster so i have to believe why would you date the disaster i don't know ask me 10 years ago (laughs) (laughs) well that's fine when you're really young who cares that's fine that is true i don't yeah i've never gotten in a relationship and been like oh she's gonna clean up her act (laughs) (laughs) you go high school principal on her (laughs) Yeah, yeah yeah He's gonna figure it out. She's working through some things. Uh, but like when I get into a relationship, I do behave better. Like I, I am more responsible about shit. Yeah. I like clean my place. I fucking take care of my body. I like don't Brag. just like you like wipe your ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I won't just go on like a bender for a while. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll... you have to like be able to like you know answer your phone. Like your phone can't be dead. You know. Right. Like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like. I was going to say, though, I think a religious chick would still be like, well, he's like kind of a bad boy, but I just really like him, you know? And I think that that doesn't happen with like a man to a woman, like, but it will, it could happen from a woman to a man, I feel like. I I could see that more likely, Mm -hmm. but. I dated a girl that was semi-religious. Semi is fine. Like, if you're like, yo, Jesus is cool. I go to church. Like, I I like, I like church, but you're just like Christ-like beautiful yeah. you're like, it's not my business whatever that's cute i yeah. like really that came up. but it was yeah. like it, it was we were this wasn't working i was like you're, you're. <laughs> i thought i was like you guys were doing ass to ass <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't working we, could, we, could, we would just rub butts until they chafed and you know nobody was really getting any sexual satisfaction so it was, <laughs> so it wasn't wrong. working you know yeah, yeah. we just kind of get into this old wooden chest naked and just throw have someone shake it up it wasn't sex <laughs> Well, it's, I also feel like religion, like, I don't know. Some people treat shit like religion that isn't technically a religion. Like, I, I dated someone forever who was in the military. And it you basically conduct yourself like you. it's like that's your fucking religion. And it didn't work out because it was just like I couldn't, de- even though the rules of that, like, system didn't apply to me, the way that it, like, affected his life and behavior, like, it just didn't, we, it didn't last long term once he enlisted. Little um, branch. Is uh, the Navy Wells Ooh. Fargo? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, the Navy. That sounds yeah. hot. You dated a military man? Yeah, it was like my high school boyfriend, uh, into like well into college. But then it was like it was getting to the point where it was like we we're you know twenty, twenty one years old, and they're like you have to get married soon. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, now this is starting to affect me. I already feel weird about this because I was like baby leftist Jamie, and I was like, I don't. I don't agree with the Navy. And he's like, all right, let's just. And then it was like, oh, and also you need to maybe marry into this way before you're like ready to make any sort of commitment like that. And so even though we loved each other, it's like, well, I can't do that. You know, I think that what's interesting about young people in the uh, like armed forces, whatever, um, I think they have to get married in this weird way, like especially in the Navy. They're like, you got to get married. Oh, everyone's gonna think you're a queer. <laughs> like I think that's weirdly they're like you gotta get married. Mm. I don't, and it's like also. I mean, there are like all of these reasons. I mean, there's like all sorts of shit like that, especially like whatever ten years ago when this was happening. But like benefits are way better for a married. Well, I think to yeah, your point like, though, you have a place to live. But there's yeah, there's a. I think to your point about the stability that comes with that wedding band. I think that it presents like he would probably you know. I think that not even back in the day, still like in corporate America and really any 
sort of workforce. If you're a man who got married, they're like, well, you know, we got to give Johnson that uh, promotion. Because, you know, his, uh, he's got a bundle of joy on the way, you right. know? And like so, the veneer of maturity, yeah. Yeah, it, like, graduates you in some way. And so you seem really stable. Like, oh, he, you know, he can take on the McAllen account. <laughs> you, <sure? laughs> you know? I mean, he just tied the knot. <laughs> and she's a great gal. Yeah. <laughs> she's a stunning girl. You ever, you ever see the movie Moneyball? Yes, uh, yeah. There's, like, a scene where they're, like, looking at players to pick up or uh, sign. And there's this one guy going, yeah, he's got a hot girlfriend. He's confident. Sign him. Like they would, they would look at the guy's girlfriend, and if she was really hot, he'd like, that's confident guy. Sign. That's the and movie it's, where it's like Brad Pitt is doing math. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's based mm, on Didn't like story. it. <laughs> yeah, I know it's about baseball, and then so I was like, just because Brad Pitt is in it, I was like, it's, I can't. Well, I don't like you sports. Would, you, it's not. You, <laughs> give it a chance. I'm not about to pitch you money. No, ball, it's but, supposed to be good. It's yeah. supposed to be like one Oscars and shit. It's very good. Yeah, 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 was, yeah. But they also say movies that are good that I'm like, oh, like like four men talking. <laughs> it's like I don't. That, I is, really, that is what it is. Yeah. So is The Godfather. Okay, The mm-hmm. Godfather is about family. Okay. Yeah, but it's like dudes talking. It's about Italian Americans and Diane <laughs> Keaton and uh it's really good. What do you tell? There's just... action, there's a shootout scene. Yeah, yeah, there's action in Moneyball. Does anyone get shot? Nah. Yeah, yeah. Well, boring. I can't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw The Godfather for the first time like fr- on Friday. Bro. So good, right? I really liked it, yeah. You should see The Godfather 2 even better. I've heard. Uh, Robert De Niro plays a young Marlon Brando in it. It's so good, and it's it's like Pacino is really the lead, and he's so fucking good. It's mm-hmm. great. This is a plug for Godfather 2. It came out in 1978. <laughs> Have you heard of it? It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we love to plug old movies yeah this. just to give them a bump you know, yeah. give them a bump on the pod you could watch it on a delta flight they got godfather one through three i wouldn't recommend three it's not that good i heard three was bad <laughs> yeah i haven't seen three yet i liked there was a whole like whatever i don't need to talk about the godfather i liked it yeah. i liked it though <laughs> no what's your hot take on the godfather it's not a hot take it's been a take for i think like decades we're just like there's like whatever you have like two women in the movie and they're both like i i can't think of a lot of movies like this where like both of the characters like connie and Kay, they're both like fucking fascinating and everything they like all go, they both go on this like huge arc and you just like don't get to see any of it which is weird because usually i feel like people just don't write female characters it they're doesn't just there and nothing happens but things happen to them you just don't get to see it yeah like, it, where the fuck are those scenes it I doesn't pass that. the bechtel test no do you know what the bechtel test is no, you wouldn't. That's okay. We're referenced. <laughs> I'm not at work. Do it on your own time. <laughs> We're not going to do unpaid emotional labor for you, no, Liam. Okay. What is it? What is it? Okay, the Bechtel test is based on a. Uh, it's actually a comic strip that was like called like Bechtel something, right? I know that that's uh, like the it's by Allison Bechtel. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's the concept. If it doesn't pass the Bechtel test, um, okay, I got to be concise when I say this. It's if uh, a woman is in a film or in a TV show, and they do, are not talking about a man. For like two lines of dialogue. And, it, and weirdly, a, a lot of <laughs> movies don't have that. Mm. You look really yeah. perplexed. Yeah, I was trying to do a really misogynistic thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and yeah. That, and uh, Liam's that like, and that's a bad thing? Like, and, so that, <laughs> and so that would, ha- yeah, it doesn't happen yeah, most no. of the time. I was just thinking of like, Joe Pesci's mother in the in Goodfellas, like trying to think about what she talks about. I'm like, oh, she was just talking about food. <laughs> yeah, but so that she, would count. So that counts. Yeah, and there's, there's but there's a lot of movies that you would think would pass it and don't. For example, like very like strong female casts, but a lot of their if they're talking about like their father or like uh, any sort of man's like situation or a plight or anything like that, or a lot of rom coms, they are never really talking about anything that doesn't pertain to a guy or something like that. Yeah. And the way that some movies and some television pass the Bechtel test is interesting because it'll be something like, oh, what makes it technically pass? It's like, oh, they like talk about food. Yeah, it's like so dis. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The way that we like have talked about it on, because I have a podcast that, uh, about like women in movies and stuff and so plug we, it what is it it's called the bechdel cast shut the fuck Wait, i was uh, i just brought that up randomly yeah whoa dude Wild. wow i can't believe yeah. you i'm sorry i gave such a sloppy no it was good it was really good i'm sure sh- you would have been able to say it like a fucking professor and i'm like no. it's like when there's two like broads and something 
and they are just talking about cock, and, and that's not good. You and, see, and nipples, <laughs> are, and nipples are hard. You can see it through a shirt, <laughs> and that's like half the movie. <laughs> and everyone likes it. So you have a podcast called Bechtel Test, the Bechtel Cast, but yeah, the Bechtel Cast, yeah, and you discuss certain films in it. Yeah, so we don't like we don't talk about the test the whole time because it's a fucking two second discussion. But just like how women are like written and portrayed uh, in like famous movies and stuff. So that was why I watched The Godfather because I'd never seen it and I was like, oh, let's see, let's see how it goes. And I was like, really uh, pleasantly surprised that it's like the women that are there are fucking amazing. You just don't get to see them because like there's not a vested interest in showing what happens to them. So I kind of want like a uh, whole you know like rosencrantz and gildenstern are dead yeah like that but for the two women and the godfather where you just get to see what like how they got to where they were by the end of the movie that's like such interesting fan fiction that like would be written do you know rosencrantz and gildenstern it's like a shakespeare uh you know shakespeare yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i know that mm-hmm. what, they were in hamlet they're yeah they're like side characters in hamlet they go off to do their own thing and then there's like a book called uh rosencrantz and gildenstern stern stern, stern yeah. are dead and it's like an alternate kind of like what would happen i don't know who's it written by yeah oh uh, tom stoppard i think okay uh, yeah. but yeah it's just like a whole like it is basically just like fan fiction in the same way that like wicked is basically fan fiction you know on what um, wizard loss oh okay i don't yeah. know shit it's about wicked, wicked different than i thought it was the wizard of oz is not nah bro no. why well, would then it would be called the wizard of oz <laughs> Wait, what? yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit i thought it was like the wizard i just thought they were like it was like a modern take i oh, fuck i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah how dare you not know the plot of wicked <laughs> i fucking dude believable. i gotta get my ass to broadway you, you gotta get your ass to probably. We've all been, People saying, have been that. saying that. Yeah. yeah, we have all been saying I've that. I've been saying that. I feel like um, what's interesting about though, like the reason why those characters aren't showcased though, is because um, it's not that they're not interesting, but if you even look at like uh, I don't know, like the mafia, like women are just such a tertiary part. Not even a, they're 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 not a part of it at all. Like I'm rewatching right. the Sopranos. Plug the Sopranos. Mm. Yeah. Um, so good. And the women in that show are, I mean, fucking Carmella. Are you kidding me? Unfucking Edie Falco, brilliant. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. She's great. She's so good. But it's like the women are so not a part of like the business dealings that it's like, oh, you don't even. And it's like you can't know about it. Right. So then they just kind of become like such a blip, you know? Right. It's interesting. Dr. Melfi, hot, right? Hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love a Loring Bronco, dude. Awesome. <laughs> so He's hot. Great. She's great. My favorite scene in Goodfellas is when uh, Ray Liotta goes over to her neighbor's house mm-hmm. and then like socks the shit out of him, like breaks his teeth on yeah. that walk on... over. You're like, <laughs> no, the best part is what he's like <laughs> when you hear like her, um, you know, she's like, if any other guy would come over with a gun, I know all my girlfriends would flee. But I got to admit, it turned me on. <laughs> I was like, that up? was immaculate. Dude, yeah, that's that so was so good. good. Oh, man. And I was like, yeah, I'd go for that. If you're white trash enough, you've seen that angry walk before that was doing. You've seen, you've seen <laughs> someone in your family so... go to talk to a neighbor like that. Yeah. Like, I, the second I saw that walk, I was like, this is, uh, I'm about to fight the neighbor walk. I've seen that walk <laughs> coming from both directions, yeah. too. You're like, oh, there's the whole, it's oh, so scary. shit, the neighbor's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's pissed. <laughs> Kevin's pissed. Oh, the angry walk. Oh, ooh, wow. ooh. Scary. It, it's My neighbor such... could, could become like a block. Like, he could become a block and just like, yeah, they're like Lego people that are like, I'm going to fight. Yeah. And I got it. My whole family is we're not we're flight. We're we're we're, we're not fight. We are flight. Uh, but if you have the wrong uncle over, it's gonna be a fight. You know. And that's yeah. the that's the fun of Thanksgiving. And that's, <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, my uncle's coming over, and it's gonna, we're gonna get in an argument pretty mm-hmm. soon. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't get into arguments with my family unless my aunt is like, oh, Bobo, you lost weight. That's so good. And I'm almost like, oh, that's mean. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I'm saying it's good that you lost weight because it wasn't looking good. Your face was too puffy. Oh, thanks so much. We've wow. all been talking about it <laughs> in a good way, Bobo. <laughs> no, thanks. It's a compliment. Why did you yeah. see what that? Call, what do they call you? Uh, Bobo and like, je n'aime, like je, it's like saying sweetie or like honey. Oh, okay. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. 
Anyway, <laughs> my culture is not your costume, so yeah. don't say, don't think you can say "baba." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What were you guys for Halloween? Mm. Anything uh, upsetting? That was Kermit, bro. That was crazy. You were Kermit? Hell yeah. <laughs> Can I see a picture? Oh, yeah, dude. I'll show you after the pod. It I was, would love that. I've always wanted to be Kermit, first of all. It yeah. was such a joy because I was Kermit and I was walking down the streets in New York and people were like, Kermit! And I was like, <laughs> what's up? Everyone's happy to see you all the time. Your, yeah, your story of you doing this was so fun. Oh, yeah. You know, he goes like, yeah. he like yeah. loses his mind. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. It's great. Charlie's. Oh, and my boyfriend was Miss Piggy, but it was like really hurt because it was so scary. funny. It was <laughs> scary. So it would be like, people would be like, oh, Kermit. And then they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like Kermit and Miss Piggy. They'd be like, it's Kermit. And oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and then he'd be like, yo, what's up? He'd be like, Jeez, fuck. He's like so bad at, bur- like, he couldn't even like sit properly. Like, you know, he's supposed to be. Miss Piggy is like this like idealized, like she's supposed to be kind of like yeah. Marilyn Monroe, you she's know? She's very femme. Yes. Yeah. And she's like, you know, all she's like that kind of look. And he had the whole thing. But he's like, he's such a big jaw and just such a big face. And he kept like just being like clunky. Was he trying or was he like, I'm just going to be myself, but I'm dressed as Miss yes. Piggy? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he got, he hired, he paid somebody a few hundred dollars to come over and like do full makeup, do it like a prosthetic nose. I that can't was, wait to see this. I'm not yeah. even saying that. Was, like me and Angus were talking about it, how <laughs> genuinely unsettled we were with how he looked. We were literally like, this is fucking terrifying. <laughs> It sounds yeah. like seven days to live shit. Well, it was gro- yeah, it was gross because like he would like be like, let's kiss. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> when he got the makeup done, he was like, jo- he was like, oh, we should fuck like this. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Why would you want to fuck Kermit? No. I guess it's because. Why would you want to fuck Kermit? He said. I, I was like, hold on. Wow. That wasn't the problem. That's not what I meant. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It was> that- <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to fuck no. Kermit? Well, Who doesn't want to fuck, fuck Kermit? Fuck- First of all, who doesn't want to fuck Kermit? Yeah, he's kind of the perfect man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, fuck, <laughs> fuck, Mary, kill Kermit, Fozzie Bear, mm. Ralph. I forget Ralph. Ralph is the dog. The dog, and then the, he's a musician, right? I think they all play I, music. I say, I say, kill Fozzie. That's easy. Why Fozzie like plays the bassoon or some sort of obscure like, instrument? Isn't he like he's the comedian? He's an like yeah, kill him. Well, <laughs> he's like a Look. Dave Coulier vibe. Oh, yeah. Back. Oh, he does clean comedy. No, thank you. <laughs> Keep it pushing. Yeah. Kill him. Marry Kermit. Fuck Rolf. That would be fun. Fucking Rolf. Yeah. Same yeah. answer. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Again. I'm gonna. I second that too. Because you gotta marry Kermit for you know the benefits. Mm-hmm. He's like. He's a star. He's a he's a star. He's he hosts really a show. Like you're marrying into. He's such a good man. He's he's very kind. He writes b- beautiful music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The gay anthem, Rainbow Connection. <laughs> he's an ally. He's an ally. He's yeah. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta. Wow. Anyway, should we stay on something? I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're hitting an hour. If you want to do, I think we should do one more. Uh, one more. You know. All right. Why don't you 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 pick from this list? I get to pick one. Yeah. Okay. Wild card. Ooh, um, let's see. Uh, I hate my partner's friends. What should I do? What would you do? If I hated my partner's friends, not fucking hang out with them. Hang out with the partner or hang out with the partner's friends? Hang out with the partner's friends. What if it's unavoidable sometimes, you know? Uh, then I would have to have a talk with them. Maybe like, I, for some reason, there's so many talks within a relationship that give me extreme anxiety because you don't want to like make someone you love feel like you don't but for some reason the friends conversation has always been very i was like yeah man like if if we're together you need to be able to objectively realize that your friends maybe are the worst and like if you if they're the worst and they're obnoxious and you still want to hang out with them that's fine but i don't have to i don't know i also don't because but i also in the reverse like if i've dated someone and they have like not vibed with my friends i don't want them around I was like, you're ruining my time with my friends. Stay but home. also, isn't that a red flag if probably your partner doesn't get along with your friends? Because I think that it's interesting. I think a woman could be like, oh, that's a bad sign. And then I think a guy is like, I don't really care. Like, I, of course, you don't like Tommy. Tommy's a piece of shit. <laughs> right. You know, so I, I'm just really I'm like, as long as you can admit that Tommy's a piece of shit. And it also depends on what kind of piece of shit. Like if it's there's a like lines there, but. My best friend's name's Tommy Emil. It's funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> so is he a piece of shit or he's what? He's a great guy. Yeah, he's okay. Actually, he's like one of the one of my hometown pals where I have I'd have no issue bringing someone around because he's okay. like, me. Most of my friends are like that, 
But then I think, I don't, I, I think most of my friends, eighty percent of my friends are okay. But then there would be the twenty percent where I'm like, you're not gonna like this person, and I just. But, you know, I've known him since I was born, so we're going to hang out with him. It's nice to preface somebody with that because I can handle that of like, look, this guy kind of sucks, but like, whatever. He's Mm -hmm. like a part. He's like a fucking friend of a friend and he's always around. But if you're just kind of like, no, dude, Jason's great. I'm like, Jason's an (laughs) (laughs) anti-vaxxer. I'm like, I don't like Jason. I'm sorry. I'm not going to let him breathe near me. Jason's (laughs) openly bigoted. (laughs) I'm like, I... So, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I don't want to butter my bread, but I feel like I, I'm very wealthy in friends. I have mm-hmm. such incredible friends that are super cool, and I feel like I've always indoctrinated like boyfriends into my friends because they're just so great. And yeah. I feel like that's even like, that's one of like my benefits. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, I come with like these, you know, it's like when you play a video game and like there's the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah disadvantages i'm a mentally ill comedian <laughs> <laughs> advantages i i got a wet pussy i mm-hmm. i have i got great friends mm-hmm. you know um yeah that's pretty much it that's <laughs> <laughs> pretty much it but um a functioning vagina and i have a pretty cool group chat yeah <laughs> yeah I, I have great friends um and so i think my standard of human being mm-hmm. is like kind of high uh it's kind of like how comedians standard of uh, conversation is a bit higher mm-hmm. you know we could still be polite to people but i'm just not gonna let somebody go on about like telling me a bad story i just that's really hard for me to sure. be around <laughs> and, like yeah. i'm like this hurts <laughs> so it's kind of like that i don't know i just like i can i think being supportive of your partner's friends and who they like to spend time with it's good because you know you guys gotta really have autonomous kind of social lives i think that's really important mm-hmm. um how do you stand i mean what the question is is like what what do you do with it yeah uh, i guess if it's all of them yeah the relationship's not going to work out and it shouldn't work out but if it's a couple of them and you love the person you're not going to see them more than a few times a year whatever just yeah then it's fine mm-hmm. cuz yeah if it's all of them then it's like oh the person you're dating probably is like them and he's fucking put and his you a mask don't on see it. Yeah. yeah that is scary it <laughs> yeah. is very scary i think if you're on the same page with the partner it's okay if you're like hey i don't like that girl and she's like of course you don't that's okay yeah it's fine. right right then it doesn't matter but if she's yeah, like Monica what do you mean sucks you're, everyone yeah, has yeah. a friend who like sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> that like you're just kind of like you know we just kind of like put up with them we're fine though you know whatever no harm no foul but if you're like this person's amazing and i'm like how in what universe is that true yeah, yeah. but like, yeah they're bad yeah it's like i i every time like i introduce a guy to my friend you it, you just have to like brief someone in an honest way that says like I love my friends. Like, I would fucking die for them. This one, like, you will not get out of a conversation for three hours. I wouldn't initiate a conversation with them. Like, it just, like, I don't know. Give me some, like, lead, you know, just give me some, yeah. something to work with. But, yeah, it would be so scary if, like, you are dating somebody and then, like, you realize that it was just a facade. Like, they were like, no, actually, turns out I'm a piece of shit. And you're like, right. whoa, dude. <laughs> that was good. You got me. You got me. That's All good. Right. Um, great. Well, yeah, we should, uh, we should wrap on that. Yeah, that sounds great. Do you have anything to plug, Jamie? Um, yeah, you can, uh, I, I have a book that's coming out next year and you can pre-order it now. It's called Raw Dog. It's about hot dogs. Sweet. Yeah. What's about hot dogs? Mm -hmm. Is it a novel? Is it a novella? No, it's a nonfiction. It's the complete kind of like history of hot dogs and then i took a two-month road trip uh like researching hot dogs it's about like professional eating it's about a really bad breakup i went through it's about a lot of stuff that's, <laughs> that's amazing cool i'm very that's excited about that yeah. well thank you yeah. so much for joining us please thank follow you. jamie on instagram she's so funny she posts really great stuff see her comedy support thank you please thank you thank you good night oh, oh.